Hey guys, it's Jessie. Today I'll be doing a tutorial on an effect I did for a video I was recently a part of. This involves some basic knowledge of After Effects layout and masking and different tools, but I'll be going into depth in with most of them, so do not be afraid. Okay, this is the clip portion that I'll be using. You see the character hit his arms on the door and the word thud comes out of his body to emphasize the thud, <laughs> the struggle. Okay, so I already have the things set up, but I am going to redo it. Here we go. So, you drag your clip in. Let's just close this. You drag your clip in that you want, this is the clip, into a new composition. Then you want to designate which area of the clip you're going to use. So probably from around here. You can click Alt Bracket and then I'll close bracket to get the clips that you want or you can just move the work and preview area to where you want the clip. I like to do both. Okay, now that you have your area selected, you are going to create your text. So I'm going to type Thud. Oh, with an exclamation point. I'm using the font Yikes, regular at 100 size. Uh, the rest is pretty standard. You can just look at my values if you like. But, you see, it's not going to go behind his head. So, what you got to do is the art of rotoscoping. Duplicate this clip, put one on top, and double click. Go to your little man with a paintbrush and select the area. After Effects is pretty good at guessing where you want to or what you want to rotoscope. So just let it do its thing for a bit and then because the text is coming out from this way, this side is the only side that should matter in terms of precision. This side should not be of any use to you, so it doesn't matter that it's not perfect. But that looks pretty good in my opinion. So it just did all the work for us. Thank you After Effects. Okay, now we're going to isolate this clip just to touch up the edges, so change your visibility. And you're going to feather, just to make the edges seem less jagged, and shift the edges in a tiny bit. One dress seems fine, and everything else is fine. Make sure you have your fine-tuned roto brush mask, roto brush mat on. You can look at these options, but I think this is pretty much all that we need to do, and put motion blur on. Okay. That looks pretty good. Yes. That's good. Change visibility on both these, and wow, we are already so far. We've made it so far. Okay, open up position. This is where, approximately, you want the thud to go, or I want the thud to go. Put a keyframe, R for rotation. So press your R button, you have your rotation, set a keyframe. You probably want it a little bit like that because it's coming from this way. Then you press U to bring up both of the properties that you changed and move back to before he hits his hands 
and move everything this way. Now you see that you have these handles on your path. This is the path which your text will be following, by the way. It's just going straight, just like that. I want it to go up and down a little. So I'm going to pull these handlebars out, and you can see it goes in and out just a little. Maybe make it a little bit bigger. Okay, I like that. That's fine. But we're also going to change the rotation because here it is the exact same rotation property as here, and it does not look realistic. So we're going to move that. We can actually take this off to just see. That's probably good. We'll fix that. Okay, what you want to do next is I'm going to go to your opacity, and opacity is T, set a keyframe, and then open up your other properties. And I probably want it to disappear pretty shortly after it's gotten to its position. Here I want it to appear, so set a keyframe, move back, and I don't want it here, so we're going to make it zero. And that looks pretty good, my friends. Okay, so what we're going to do now is, as you can see, we're just going to preview it, so control zero is going to preview with sound. Hold on a sec. So in my opinion, that's a little too fast. So we're going to make it come out just a little slower. I want to hold that fade out. Okay, that doesn't look bad. Okay, I like how that looks. Okay, it's going on a really boring linear path, which we must change. So, we will change it. Select your position key points, keyframes, and go to the graph editor. Right now you can see that all of the speed for the positioning of the word is the same. It is linear. So you're going to want to change it into a curvier graph. <laughs> and pull this handlebar out to increase the speed at the beginning. As you can see it gets slower. So it's going to come out really fast and it's going to slow down, which is exactly what I want it to do. You can preview. Okay. Also, I don't like how much this is rotating, so we're going to set it at like 15, probably. Nope, 10. Okay. Okay, now that we've got that, I also want to do the same thing to my rotate properties. Pull that in, pull that in, and we're probably good. Okay, that looks all right. Now, for the wiggly effect, we're gonna go and search wiggly scale wipe. Double click as you have the thud selected. Close this, open it, text animator. You will not see this unless you double click this. Go to your wiggly selector and this is what you want. As you can see, the font has already had scale adjustments within, or the text has had scale adjustments within it. Your max amount determines how big your 
letters are going to be, and your min amount determines how small they're going to be. So we're going to concentrate on this. You don't want them too big because it'll look strange. You do not want them too small either. So that seems probably right. Okay, that's fine. I'm fine with that. Um, and your wiggles per second. Since this clip, you can see right here, 106 to 122 is barely a second long. This is from here to here is a second. This is not a second. So two wiggles per second is going to be really slow. You're going to want more than that. I should probably say five wiggles per second is good, and I don't like how small that text is, so... Okay, now we're in a preview. Okay, I like how that's looking. Final step is to get rid of this part of the text. You can see it's poking out, and you do not want your text to be poking out of his head and the door like that. So we're going to do something called masking. Get your pen tool and make a box around the text. It disappears because it will only show what is inside. Oh, sorry what is inside of the text of the box. It disappears because it will only show what's inside of the box. Okay, so we're going to open up our masks and you see this is your mask. So, go back to when the text is not visible. Zoom in a little too much. Go to mask path and set a keyframe. Go forward. As you can see, the mask travels with the font, so you're going to want to shift, press, and adjust the mask. Shift again and adjust it. And you can see it's setting keyframes for you. Yep, that's fine. Okay, because the rest of the mask will just travel with it. Maybe make it, make this point further out than this one. Okay, that's good. So, there's tiny piece right here. Press U and we're gonna fix this. Okay, that's good. I like that. Now, to make the text more realistic rather than just text plastered onto a video, I learned a trick Go to your Gaussian Blur, double click while you have your text selected, and probably around 1.3 is what you would normally put, or what I would normally put. And that looks already better. But I also want the glow. In Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, they have a very obvious glow around most of their text, and that is the effect that I am recreating. So we're going to go to glow. Double click while you have it selected once again. And these are the properties that I normally use. So I normally have around 75. The glow radius is normally 24. Flow intensity is fine. Flow loops, six. Okay, we're gonna get into that later. Um your These are the different effects that you can apply to the glow. You can see they differ in the way that they interact with the text. 
I like to choose behind, uh, sorry, hard. I like to choose hard light. It gives the glow behind and on top of the text. And this is the important part. You're going to want to select vertical. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Okay, so I think we are done. Just going to watch through it again. Maybe I could just extend it a tiny bit more. And looks like we have it. So that is all. I hope you learned something from it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you for watching. This has been Jesse Zeus.